hope you're having a good morning so far. I've made one batch of bread and I'm making a second one, so I figured I'd show everyone uh, what that all entails because it's a lot cheaper and it's fun to do. Uh, it kind of help, helps you let some aggravation out because you can push the, push the bread down or the dough. And it's fun to see things start from scratch. So here is my homemade sourdough bread. And it's special to me because my mom made it when I was growing up. Uh, me, my sister, and my brother would crowd the kitchen. And as soon as it was ready to cut into, there'd probably be one or two loaves already in our tummies. So this is a very rich bread. Uh, like I said, it's homemade sourdough bread, but it's kind of a sweet sourdough. It's not um, completely sour. <laughs> so. I enjoy this better than the sourdough I get from the store. And I've looked up um, other recipes just to compare, and this is a pretty basic sourdough um, starter, or bread. So my kitchen's kind of a mess because we just made, uh, bre we made breakfast and lunch, um, eggs and everything, so, and I have not cleaned up from that. That looks great! Jasper's, Jasper's drawing pictures for me. Beautiful. We'll hang that up on the fridge. So hi, thanks for joining Angela. Um, if you want to learn how to make sourdough bread, it is so easy. It's so cheap. You can buy a bag. Hey Carla, you can buy a bag of flour, bread flour, for about five bucks. And that's how much a loaf of bread costs these days. At least a good uh, loaf of bread. And if you turn it over and look at those ingredients lists, you'll see all kinds of ingredients that you don't store in your cabinet. So why should you buy bread or any food made with those things? Things that you can't pronounce and things you wonder where they're from. Please give me a hi. You want, hey, why don't you say hi to everybody, Jasper? There's Mr. Incredible. Say hi. Hi. What did you just do? You're wearing a costume. Yeah. And you just drew mommy a picture. Yeah. And Sebastian's down on the kitchen floor. He's playing. He can sit up great now, so he's playing with a little push toy, a bunch of buttons. Anyway, so this is the starter. This is something I started. I started it uh, 15 November of last year. So this. And be, this can last for generations, so when I'm dead and gone and my kids hopefully continue this, they can be using the same exact starter. And the only thing that's in here is distilled or purified water, um, there's some sugar and some potato flakes. And instead of using potato flakes, you could just boil, um, you know, use the water that you boiled some potatoes in. And uh, I've got an awesome book I can recommend. Um, for different starters. Whoop! Oh. Oh, poor thing. He's got carrots all over his face. Why don't you show the camera? See, I got carrot face. Huh? Say hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just fell. He's still learning how to. Alright, so this is the yeast that I get. You want to get an active dry yeast, and you can buy stuff in the little packets, but this is more cost effective and I think it lasts a while. I do also cook a lot or bake a lot, so this is more beneficial to me. And I'm, I wonder if I can get something bigger. This says to use within six months, and then I store it in the refrigerator as well. Um, and one packet worth is two and one quarter uh, teaspoons, so it's a lot easier this way instead of, you know, throwing out a bunch of garbage. Alright, so, here's my first tip. This is how you know your yeast is working. You have to proof it first. So, I've put warm water and some yeast and a little bit of sugar in here and see how it started Mom, bubbling. Mom, kick out this! Uh, it um, might be hard Mom, to see. Out. I will check it out when I'm done with this video, sweetie. But that's how you know uh, your yeast is good and active. Um, is 
When you put it into warm water and some sugar, it, the cultures activate and it becomes bubbly. You set you down, okay? I Is that good? I'm gonna take a bath after this. And there are some things you don't want to add to your starter because it could affect the outcome. Um, I can't remember exactly the whole list, but I try to keep anything out of here that I can. Because oil or sugar, or, or not sugar, but salt, any of those things could affect it. So you keep it pretty basic. I'm just going to stir this up. And there are only six ingredients for this whole thing. And like I, I've mentioned three. This is yeast, warm water, sugar. I put all the liquids in one. So I'm going to add my corn oil. I hope you can see that. Adding my corn oil. And stirring the whole time. And now I'll measure out a cup of the starter. Here's the starter. You can start, you'll see over, because you set, let this set up for eight hours or overnight, and you start seeing it bubble and activate and things start rising to the surface. So that's another way you know it's working. So I'm just going to stir it a little bit. And then measure out it. One and a half cups. And now I can cover this back up and put it in the fridge. And I'll show you the bread that I've already started so you know what it looks like. Hey Brenda, fellow baker, bread baker.
going at the corn urge or the edges as much. It slowly gathers it up as it needs it. Here's red. Mommy, look at this bread. Whoops. That was perfect. Okay, now I'm going to knead it. So I'm going to set Sebastian down and then I'm going to... Hey, Lisa. And then I'm going to wash my hands real quick. So you can play with your toys. Just for a few minutes. Mom! And of course I'm using my own homemade soap. Mommy, come look at this picture. Show me. Whoa. The big belly button? Uh, no. It's a spiky who makes the Make, it makes the teeth. It makes the teeth powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I both yeah. That was oh, good, boys. Both yeah. So I'm gonna get fashion a couple times.
but you want all that flour. And I had a problem when I first started making bread, I just kept adding more and more flour, thinking that's what the problem was. But really, it was the humidity of the air. I was living in Oregon at that time, and humidity is a way of life. anymore because they heard you crying. Carl and Colin, they were here and they left. They said, oh my gosh, you're crying baby. I don't need to do all that. Started, and I can show you that. This one I wasn't rushed, and actually, it actually looks nice. I have it in my dehydrator. And here you go. It might be hard to see because the lighting. Can you see that? And it's already raised quite a bit. Some tips and tricks to making sure it's raised or not. Put your finger in there. I can show that later when I'm ready to punch it. But I, I put, I put, hey Jess, put that in the dehydrator with a with a bowl of water so it doesn't harden. And uh, it takes about half the time as it would regularly when I use the dehydrator. Hi, Bonnie. So now I've got a huge mess to clean up. So that was easy. Um, here, let me just sit. Special down for a moment. I wanted to show you a couple books. So this is the recipe that I got from my mom, a friend of hers gave this to her. Like I said, this is a very basic recipe you could find if you search up sourdough bread. This is probably the recipe you're going to find. Um, just six ingredients. But there are some great variations. My mom gave this, to, this book to me and it's, it's all torn up and well loved, but this has some great ideas like Mexican bread, add some jalapenos and some cheddar cheese right into the dough. Yeah. And you can make a meal of just the bread itself. And here's another good one. Soups and bread. Little variations and how to meal plan. I want to cut paper with scissors. Alright, in just a second, sweetie. Yeah. So, you can always find recipes online, but me personally, I enjoy thumbing through a cookbook and find, I like looking at pictures and, and um, just finding random ingredients instead of, oh, well, this is what I have in my cabinet. The, the cool thing about the internet is you can just 
type in whatever ingredients you have and find a recipe based on that. And that's fun, but you don't, I think it's more fun to go through an old book and see what has, is tried and true and and make and after you've done a few recipes, you can make things up on your own. You've kind of got like the background, you know what needs to be there, you know what like a leavening agent or a rising or a sweet factor. You want sweet and salty to go on one. So bread has salt in it as well. There's a tablespoon of salt in there. That's how you make a good a good meal. You you take a few ideas from one and and mix them together. But I'm going to go ahead and, and discipline these boys real quick because they've been doing things they know they're not supposed to be doing since I'm busy. And uh, in a few hours I will show you the outcome of my bread. See you later.